what are you looking for in potential NCAA umpires? And, you know, maybe highlight some topics that maybe wouldn't be brought up uh, in most cases, like, you know, your typical, uh, you know, umpire mechanics and things like that. What are you looking for in a potential United umpire, college umpire? Sure. Well, well let, let's talk a little bit about the process first. Um, you know, obviously, our organization has really embraced taking umpires in and not necessarily looking at years of experience. Um, and, and really trying to judge a product of, of an umpire. I mean, an umpire is basically putting a product out there. They, they have the skills and they have the demeanor and they have all of these pieces that contribute to whatever their umpire makeup is. And certainly experience is one of those things, but in my kind of past life of college baseball, um, you know, there was a, a restriction on it. If you didn't go to professional umpire school, you had to have worked high school baseball for three years or some groups were five years. And um, that's one of the things kind of through collegiate officials group and now United that um, we wanted to not necessarily put years on something because one of the things I learned long ago is it doesn't matter if you've been doing something for 20 years. If you've been doing it wrong for 20 years, that experience really doesn't do much for us. So um, what we've tried to do is is create a situation where people can advance from the lowest levels of eight, nine, 10 year old baseball all the way through, you know, division one college. And, and the way that we've really done that is, you know, United obviously has a pretty strong partnership with uh, NJSAB, which I'm also an, an owner in. Uh, we're a high school group in Northern New Jersey. Um, we partner very heavily. Um, they're really, we're almost one company with Mid-Atlantic Collegiate out of uh, Maryland and Virginia. Um, and what we really then try to do is look to partner, look to uh, some of the other high school and rec groups, you know, in between there um, or to the north of NJSAB to try to get a stable of, of umpires. And, and one of the things that, you know, I, I have loved about our relationship is uh, you guys have put in place a method of training to get us some umpires um, that can start to look at working college baseball. So if the question is, you know, how, how do you do that? It, it really comes down to you become an umpire, uh, whatever, however you do that. If you go to umpire school, if you start working after you are done playing, whatever it may be, and you, you work games and you get training from your local associations, from trainings, that are put on throughout the country, whatever it may be. Um, and then basically you have to find a way to get in front of our group. Um, and, and that would be through evaluations that we run, through clinics that we run, and you have to find a way to put yourself on the radar. Um, and I think sometimes that just happens organically. I mean, people in our organization watch a lot of baseball games. I happen to go to a game and, and see you and, and we think you can work college baseball. We might invite you to something. And sometimes it happens easily for people um, just by luck. And then other people kind of fly under the radar and don't get seen immediately and don't have that opportunity. And they have to find ways to advocate for themselves. Um, so basically, I think you have to get yourself in front of the people that can get you into college baseball and, and in the situation of South Jersey and Philly guys, I mean, that really means, you know, United or uh, there's two other collegiate organizations and you just have to find your way to, to go to their tryouts and take their feedback. Um, and I, I think that it's really important for umpires to be honest with themselves um, and, and not just sign up for a college tryout or you know, try to be a college umpire because they want to be. Um, talk to people in your organization that are already collegiate umpires. Take their feedback honestly, not only on specific things, but also just in general. Like, do you think I'm ready to try out? Do you think I'm ready to be a college umpire? And then, you know, do your best, put your best foot forward, take the feedback, and uh, hopefully you're in a spot where it works. And then in some cases, take feedback, work for a year, gain experience, do the things you're supposed to be doing, and come back. Um, and it's not always easy for someone to hear no, but we also hold being a college umpire at 
a level of esteem that we don't want to just say anybody can be a college umpire, anybody can go out and work our levels of college baseball. It's really important to us that we have a standard, um, and that's at any level. It just happens this is, you know, for United, it's it's the college level, it's junior college, and Division Three is, you know, our, our lower levels. Um, and we hope to get as many umpires at that level as we can. We don't have a, a restriction or a number. We would love to have a thousand college umpires, but it means that you're going to be a college umpire, not that we're just going to take you in because you applied. Right. Now, I, I, I find it fascinating, you know, when, whenever we do speak, and we don't, we don't speak every day or even every week, you know, probably 20 times a year. Um, sure. And I think it, this will either be really boring or really entertaining to see some of the similar answers we give um, mm. to certain questions. I find us very similar in the way we look at things, especially in the way you described um, maybe years of service is not the best way to analyze who is ready to make this tryout of, or something of that nature. I think that's pretty innovative, especially at the college level. It's easy for me to do that at, at you know, the travel baseball level. Um, what, what took you in that direction to sort of down, not downplay it, but you don't put so much emphasis on how many years you've been doing this. I, I think at, at the end of the day, the, I think for a lot of us, like bad examples lead to the way we think about things. And um, I think I saw early in my career um, at a bunch of different levels that experience was, you know, all of a sudden was like the paramount. Like if you've been doing this for 20 years, like people should listen to you and you should get the biggest games or you should work this level. And I just always hated that. Number one, because I was the 19 year old kid who wanted to get those games, thought I was better than people and saw those games continually going to, to other people and, and not just games, but get into a classroom session or a association meeting and you're not getting anything from the person that's up in front of the room. They're just up there because they were elected to a position or um, they're a mechanics chair. And that's not to say that, you know, there are a lot of associations doing a lot of great things, but in certain spots, there have also been, you know, misses and, and the wrong person is up there teaching and things like that. So that was one thing for me um, that I always hated. And I think, again, when you see things you don't like or things that you like in everything that we do, we try to incorporate them. Um, and I knew that there's always a young stable of umpires out there that, um, that can do the job and it's not necessarily, they haven't been around forever and it's not necessarily about that. Um, can you do the job on the field? Um, and are you respected by coaches? Are you respected by your peers? Um, and are you getting things right? And on the other side of that, and I would be remiss if I didn't address this. I mean, we have umpires who are highly, highly skilled at a young age and we have umpires on the other end of the spectrum that are highly, highly skilled, maybe not technically or mechanically, and they can still do the job. They're not maybe up to date on some of that stuff, but they have experience. They have, uh, they really tackle the personality part of umpiring uh, much better. And they are in a situation where coaches respect them and peers respect them. So we have umpires kind of all over the board in terms of, you know, we like to look at really three pieces of, of umpiring, that's knowledge, skills, and personality. And uh, that's kind of something that was uh, presented to me the first time by, by John Porter at Mid-Atlantic Collegiate. And it's, it's some combination of those three that make you a collegiate level umpire, a professional level umpire, or whatever level you're at. The combination of those three is what makes you a good umpire. And you don't have to have 100 on all three to be able to be a successful umpire. Uh, some people's personality is way better. Some people just don't get things wrong. Um, you know, and it, but the, definitely at all levels, the umpires who succeed are the ones who are in the high 90s in all three of those. So it's, it's accuracy, it's um, ability to have, know the mechanics and know where you're supposed to be and then uh, be out there and be somebody that both the umpires and the coaching staff and the GMs and the athletic directors all want to be around. So it, if I can give anybody any advice, it's certainly to try to master all three of those. Um, 
you can call every pitch right for the next 10 years, but if you're an idiot and nobody wants to deal with you, you're not assignable. You're not going to be promoted. Um, so think about all three aspects, not just one or not just two. Yeah. And I, I, I think those are all really good points. And, uh, you know, we talk to our guys all the time and, and obviously it translates at the college level about being a good person on the field, somebody that wants somebody who other people want to be around um, and being approachable. You know, I don't think you can even, if, if that's not something you have, it, it, you can't get beyond that as an assigner is probably, especially at the college level. If it's not somebody who can speak with people and deal with people and who's approachable, how, how can you put them on a field? Absolutely. I mean, and, and that's important at all levels. Now, obviously I think we get the most notoriety from, from United, but you know, I'm still in the NJSAB travel high school world. And the, the one thing that I will say is those things are different at all different levels. Um, who you are as an umpire, especially in terms of your personality, working a 10 year old game or a high school game or a division one college game, those, those three things are completely different and sometimes don't even translate in terms of the personality piece of this. So it's not only about developing a personality, but kind of developing that personality specific to where you are. And there's, there's plenty of umpires that work division one baseball and, you know, also still work 15, 20 high school games. And certainly what you're doing on a high school game is a lot different than what you're doing on a division one college game in terms of some of the decorum and things like that. And sure. if you're out there helping train umpires on some 13 and 14 year old games, that's completely different too. So right. it's developing that personality for the level you're at. Makes a lot of sense. 